what are the processes that you can have in place as a company to deal with the known unexpected? So again, I would, I would strongly suggest if, and if you're seeing this at your company, and by the way, some of this might be in your own company, not just at, right. at show site. Um, I think having a reserve of materials. We, so if we know the supply chain is disrupted, we're keeping a hundred sheets of white, you know, Centra infills, and we're keeping 50 sheets of black in inventory, and we're keeping, you know, a dozen sheets of, uh, of clear acrylic. Um, we're, we're keeping things that we, we know we may need in an emergency situation. We didn't used to do that uh, as consistently. We might have done it in a busy run. We're just doing that all the time now. We've upped our inventory of high-frequency request items like custom shelving and light boxes and drop in place, you know, sexy looking counters or uh, reception stations, um, some emergency furniture. Um, you know, we're not stocking 32 inch monitors anymore. It's everything's got to be smart TVs and we have to have a, a ready available uh, inventory of, you know, 50s and 65 inch and 75 and even 85 inch TVs just because, you know, we're, we're not in that business per se but we're in the problem solving business, right? So um, for sure doing that, um, I, think the, I think one of the best things that help, helps my people be prepared for those moments is um, our process of, um, we put every, we have a hot wash after every show. And, and you know, that was, I have a brother in the, uh, brother-in-law in the military. And so they, after every mission they go out on, they have a hot wash and they, whatever went well, whatever didn't go well, they talk about it. Right. And so we talk about it and, um, man, the things you learn, by the way, when they come back from being deployed in, 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 a, in a, in a, in a, in a hot LZ, as he says, all they want to do is go back in and train more. They just want to, they just want to stay sharp. And I think that's part of what field operators do, uh, in our industry as well. Um, if, if we, um, if we got out there and, you know, it's, hey, we, it's, yes, you forgot the banding toolbox and you forgot this. I'm talking about, man, we got to have a, um, we got to have a fabric cutter on the show floor when we have this many, many projects, or we have to have, um, you know, certain tools or a pipe cutter. We got to have the, uh, we got asked, we are always getting asked to drill, you know, uh, the two inch wire management holes in college. You bet everybody's got to have one of those in their toolbox, right? <laughs> Anyway, so some of it's tool readiness like that. Others is just um, protocol of how we do things. You get there, first thing a guy does, once the crew starts unpacking crates and taking photographs of what we see there, somebody's going to the service desk and they're checking on the service orders. We don't want to find that out and be delayed two hours of waiting for electricians if we could have been two hours earlier in the line. So a lot of it's just talking to each other during... Um, between move it and move out half times and 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 post show um, uh, wrap ups. So, um, I think when things happen a second or third time, shame on you if you're not prepared for it. Right? Um, a mistake is what did they used to tell us? A mistake it is an investment. If you don't make it again, it was an investment. It's just an expense if you keep watching it happen over and over again. Yeah. So it reminds me um, of uh, <laughs> that clip of George W. Bush. I think he gets it right, but he just acts like he doesn't get it right. Uh, when he says, fool me once, shame on me. <laughs> fool me twice, shame on you. <laughs> and he, it, it's like, it's, it's mixed up, but it's just a really yeah. funny clip. Always enjoyed well, his speeches. Yeah. Um, by the way, one of the things I, I love about those hot wash meetings, I learn more from the, the men and women on the floor that we're going through it when it's happened because they have a perspective clear yeah. that no manager does. They just do. And they go, um, I remember we were, um, we were talking about fabric and, you know, the fabric is everywhere. I mean, just huge, big, beautiful, expensive, you know, grand format graphics. So we were talking about, um, hanging signs and we said, well, what's the most important thing to know when we remember, hanging signs. And I was thinking about making sure the sign is square, the hardware is tubes are squared and they're locked and connected. And, you know, I'm just thinking like a guy in the office as I'm talking. Yeah. And one guy goes, 
You know what he said? Most important thing with hanging sign? Gloves. White gloves. So you don't because your hands dirty. get so dirty, mm. right? And what? And let me tell you, it is a pain in the neck to to try and chase out dirt on white fabric because whatever commercial grade cleaner you use, it can <laughs> white can just get grayer and grayer, and uh, and that's not the look anybody wants. But it was that that is a um, that was a perspective that it just it takes somebody on the ground to really know that it really does. So, 